As new theories emerge, our knowledge of the cosmos expands. What we used to call facts become myths. But we have more definitive ways of understanding the universe thanks to space probes such as Voyagers that expand our horizon into the uncharted void. When an important space probe like Voyager sends this kind of information that indicates new discoveries, it changes everything. But what has the Voyager just discovered? What does this discovery mean for us here on Earth? Join us as we explore how Voyager just entered deep space and is sending back a terrifying message to scientists. The twin Voyager missions have unveiled great mysteries of space in the last 45 years of space exploration, giving us some of the very first and most important looks of the true state of our solar system. It would surprise you to find out that these missions were never meant to last this long. Although the decision was born out of pure accidental discovery, the initial plans for the probe were laid out and executed in the 70s. A voyage to Neptune should take 30 years, but when Michael Minovich discovered that a spacecraft could piggyback on the velocity of a planet, it became possible to slingshot further out into the solar system. But this would only happen when there is a rare geometric alignment to the outer planets. So rare that it only happens once every 200 years. So by using planetary gravitation and velocity, Voyager was projected to reach Jupiter in less than half the time, just 12 years. Although Voyager 2 launched first on the 20th of August 1977, Voyager 1 reached the edge of the solar system first, despite lagging behind by two weeks. This is because Voyager 1 took a quicker route, but that came with a price. The route is not exactly the safest option. The space probe arrived at Jupiter just two years after the launch on the 5th of March, 1979. But right now, Voyager 1 is just outside the solar system. Voyager 2 is not far behind, reaching the same year using similar onboard equipment. Both probes took the very first close-up pictures of Jupiter. This is where we got a glimpse of the famous red spot as well as mapping the Earth-sized hurricanes that plagued the planet's surface. We also got data that showed hints of water on Europa, pictures of active volcanoes on low, and discovered the largest natural satellite in the solar system, Ganymede. But Jupiter was just a pit stop on Voyager's journey, and soon enough, both probes made the trip to Saturn with Voyager 1. Reaching first in November of 1980 and Voyager 2 almost a year later, in August of 1981, the visit to Saturn gave scientists a better understanding of Saturn's 10-hour days and a much more accurate measure of the planet's wind speeds, which could reach up to an incredible 1,100 miles an hour, the fastest of any planet in the solar system. While Voyager 2 flew past the giant planet, Voyager 1 gave us a closer look at the nitrogenous atmosphere of the planet Moon, Titan, as well as discovered 10 new spectacular moons that orbit the planet. But Saturn was the last planet both probes would observe together as the decision was made to separate both probes. Voyager 1 took an elliptic turn, heading straight for the heliosphere, while Voyager 2 carried on to two other planets as planned. In August 1989, Voyager 2 made it to Neptune, flying within just 3,000 miles of the planet's North Pole. The flyby revealed the coolest planetary surface in the solar system, with temperatures reaching minus 400 degrees Fahrenheit. But data sent back by the Voyager 2 revealed that Neptune was not as inferior as scientists had previously believed, that the surface was filled with Earth-sized storms and fast-moving clouds on ice. But while the data on Neptune was indeed revealing, it left the question of how such a planet with barely any solar energy reaching it could form and maintain such dynamic weather. However, answering that question would be left to future probes as Voyager 2 left the blue icy planet, making its way to the opposite edge of our solar system by December of 2004. 
Data received from Voyager 1 suggested that the probes had reached a part of our solar system called the Termination Shock. This is a region in space where solar winds originating from our sun slowed in speeds. From traveling at millions of miles per hour to barely 250,000 miles per hour, Although this might seem incredibly fast, it pales in comparison to much faster interstellar speeds. This reduction in solar speeds is a result of external interstellar pressure from cosmic rays traveling through our galaxy. But the termination shock simply marked the beginning of the edge of our solar system. And Voyager was yet to cross the edge of the heliosphere, a milestone it made in August of 2012. The heliosphere is an invisible bubble of charged solar particles exerted by the sun on the solar system, just like other invisible forces, such as gravity. The heliosphere's magnetic field protects every planet behind it from the violent streaks of cosmic radiation that fill the universe. This discovery was made upon analysis of data from Voyager 1 during a unique solar eruption known as coronal mass ejection or CME. During their particular CME, powerful shockwaves ejected from the sun caused particles around Voyager 1 to vibrate with a much higher intensity. These vibrations were much higher than those recorded inside the heliosphere, leading scientists to conclude that Voyager 1 has entered a new unchartered part of interstellar space. Interstellar space is the void beyond the heliosphere filled with much higher energy particles and a much greater intensity of cosmic rays. Our solar system is spinning through interstellar space with the sun holding the planets together and the heliosphere acting as the protective field that shields the planets, including Earth, from the raw radioactive nature of interstellar space. In anticipation of the Voyager spacecraft reaching this cold, dark corner of space, both probes were built to be powered using Radioscope Thermoelectric Generators, or RTG, as their source of energy instead of solar energy, like most satellites. Each probe is fitted with three distinct RTGs, all of which use powerful plutonium as their fuel source. This was a remarkable choice because as the plutonium isotope decays over time, it releases significant levels of heat that each probe then converts to electrical energy. But regardless of the highly efficient nature of this energy source, it can only last for so long, as scientists have already determined that the Voyagers are currently running on less than 50% of their original power. But power consumption is the least of NASA controllers' concerns. One controller recently encountered what scientists can only describe as bizarre and unusual. We have discovered it has a lot to do with a massive glitch. The glitch with Voyager 1, currently 14.5 billion miles away from Earth, has disrupted mission control. NASA expects some delay in receiving data from the spacecraft with data units taking as much as 21 hours to reach Earth. But while the spacecraft appears to be operating properly, scientists discovered some anomalies in the data relayed in the past few months. Voyager 1 was unable to resolve its location in space and gave no indications of going into safe mode. The project manager over at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California, Suzanne Dodd, gave a statement. A mystery like this is sort of par for the course. At this stage in the Voyager mission, the spacecraft are both almost 45 years old, which is far beyond the age that the mission plan had anticipated. And in addition, the Voyagers are still going strong despite the high radiation environment that no spacecraft has flown in before. After much needed scrutiny of the data from Voyager 1, scientists realized that the glitch was from the spacecraft's Altitude Articulation and Control System, or AACS. This system controls the orientation of Voyager 1. This explained the disorientation of Voyager 1, but not the data glitch. The spacecraft was still sending and receiving the data at the expected pace and signal strength, only the data coming through 
was basically classified as junk telemetry data. While Voyager 1 was giving mission controllers over at NASA a hard time, Voyager 2 was still functional. Its power levels were on a steady decline with mission team members having to turn off non-essential systems and components to save power. The team estimates that at the current rate of power reduction, they can only hope to keep it functional until 2025. After months of receiving junk data with no apparent way to fix the probe, Voyager 1 began sending back clear telemetry data. After one last attempt to fix it, the team over in NASA realized that the spacecraft was sending through a corrupted onboard computer that had malfunctioned years ago. This computer in turn corrupted the data being sent, resulting in several months of junk telemetry data the team had to contend with. Although NASA has not revealed the cause of the glitch, other scientists have speculated that the spacecraft might have come in contact with some form of radiation that might have caused a system switch, probably due to the fact that Voyager 1 has been in interstellar space much longer and has come in contact with cosmic rays and particles that we haven't been able to study here on Earth. At what point will Voyager 2 meet the same fate? Let us know what you think in the comments section below.